stands is written in my pocket copy of Thomson S. Castle of Endurance William Wordsworth within our happy castle there dwelt one whom without blame I may not overlook, for never son on living creature shone, who more devout enjoyment with us took, here on his hours he hung as on a book, on his own time here would he float away, as doth a fly upon a summer brook, but go tomorrow, or belike today, seek for him, he is fled, and whither none can say. Thus often would he leave our peaceful home, and find elsewhere his business or delight. Out of our valley's limits did he roam, full many a time, upon a stormy night, his voice came to us from the neighboring height, oft could we see him driving full on view at midday, when the sun was shining bright. What ill was on him, what he had to do, a mighty wonder bred among our quiet crew. Ah! Piteous sight it was to see this man when he came back to us, a withered flower, or like a sinful creature, pale and wan. Down would he sit, and without strength or power look at the common grass from hour to hour, and oftentimes, how long I fear to say, where apple trees and blossom made a bower, retired in that sunshiny shade he lay, and, like a naked Indian, slept himself away. Great wonder to our gentle tribe it was whenever from our valley he withdrew. For happier soul no living creature has than he had being here the long day through. Some thought he was a lover, and did woo, some thought far worse of him, and judged him wrong. But verse was what he had been wedded to. And his own mind did like a tempest strong come to him thus, and drove the weary white along. With him there often walked in friendly guise, or lay upon the moss by brook or tree, a noticeable man with large gray eyes, and a pale face that seemed undoubtedly as if a blooming face it ought to be. Heavy his low-hung lip did oft appear, depressed by weight of musing fantasy. Profound his forehead was, though not severe. Yet some did think that he had little business here, sweet heaven forfend. His was a lawful right. Noisy he was, and gansome as a boy. His limbs would toss about him with delight like branches when strong winds the trees annoy. Nor lacked his calmer hours to vice or toy to banish listlessness and irksome care. He would have taught you how you might employ yourself. And many did to him repair, and certes not in vain. He had inventions rare. Expedients, too, of simplest sort he tried, long blades of grass, plucked round him as he lay, made, to his ear attentively applied, a pipe on which the wind would deftly play. Glasses he had, that little things display, the beetle pan uplied in gems and gold, a mailed angel on a battle day. The mysteries that cups of flowers enfold, and all the gorgeous sights which fairies do behold. He would entice that other man to hear his music, and to view his imagery, and, sooth, these two were each to the other dear, no livelier love in such a place could be, there did they dwell, from earthly labor free, as happy spirits as were ever seen. If but a bird, to keep them company, or butterfly sat down, they were, I ween as pleased as if the same had been a maiden queen.